What can you update me uh, with in terms of what's happening out there at Longwood Meadows? Hey, good evening, Ashley. Uh, I can tell you that uh, we have a rapidly evolving situation out here. We are investigating all investigative leads right now. And um, we don't want to comment when there's uh, current investi investigative activity going on. We don't want to tip our hand. We don't know if there's communication be going, being going on to Cavalcante. And um, we just don't want to re reveal our uh, strategies or tactical positions. That makes I can perfect tell sense. You that yeah. You Keep going. Earlier, there is a rapidly evolving uh, situation out here, and I believe that uh, we can further brief the press tomorrow about it. Uh, a rapidly evolving situation uh, for a reporter means this is different than, you know, every other moment today and many moments uh, in the last few days. Does that mean that the people who've been evacuated will not be brought back in and that you expect to be there all night or you expect to be there for a few hours? I don't have a time frame for the people who were evacuated. Uh, we expect to be here for a few hours, days, or weeks, as long as this takes. Um, there is a large, large presence of law enforcement here. You mentioned it before that um, some other tactical teams were moving in. I can tell you uh, three, four, five days ago, we obtained a federal warrant for Cavalcante for flight to avoid prosecution. And by obtaining that warrant, that allowed all our friends to bring all their toys, meaning all other federal agencies, and all their tactical equipment up here. And we're gonna stack the deck against um, Mr. Cavalcante. Uh, we are gonna stack the deck and we are gonna go um, do what we have to do to take him into custody here. Hopefully we can do it sooner than later, but um, we're bringing every possible asset we can into the area. That makes like perfect sense. Answer. What you say, yeah, what you say about this, this federal warrant and the fact that, you know, federal tactical teams, you know, from all over the country, tactical teams are coming in. I did want to ask you about some, some tactics that are just standard operating procedure. We see it on TV all the time. We see thermal imaging uh, catching people in real time in the black of night. I know it is really hot out there. I know that today the state police said, yes, we are using thermal imaging. Yes, the extremely hot weather is affecting it. It's not you know, diminishing it completely. But that is a question so many people have. How are we not just catching him if he's making his moves at night, if we're flooding the zone, especially with thermal imaging from above? Yeah, I think that's a fair question. Um, why we don't like to reveal our investigative techniques or tactics, I think it's fair to assume um, imaging like the, the ones you mentioned are being used. Um, but, but let's talk about the terrain. Let's talk about the environment. We're talking about a huge search grid, um, eight to 10 miles, I believe, uh, Colonel Bivens stated. That's a huge, immense area uh, for somebody that's five foot, 120 pounds to hide. And let's remember, Mr. Cavalcante, we believe, has experience being in the woods. He was uh, in Brazil. He grew up in Brazil. Uh, he was charged with a crime in Brazil, and he escaped authorities out there. So this is a man who's not, um, I would say, a survivalist, but he has experience being outside. So he, it's, a, it's a large search area. You know what? That, yeah, I'm glad you just mentioned that. I'm, and I'm sorry to cut you off. The only reason I, I caught the last thing you said there about he has experience being outside, that Brazilian murder. Uh, that ended up being the domino effect here. He stabbed his ex-girlfriend 38 times in front of her two little children because she was on to him about the murder in Brazil. And from what we've learned, and please correct me if this isn't accurate, we have learned that while in Brazil avoiding authorities, he was actually living in the trees, meaning up off the ground, harder for dogs, harder for equestrian, harder for foot you know, soldiers. So what are you doing I understand you can't be specific, but generally speaking, how are you re-strategizing or, you know, changing strategies knowing that he has this MO of hiding in the trees? Well, I, I've heard those reports as well um, that he was sleeping in trees or hiding in trees. I have nothing that can confirm that, uh, but I can tell you that he did elude authorities in Brazil, that he did spend some time outside. He spent some time even uh, before eluding authorities in Brazil. Um, as far as hiding in the trees, I can't confirm that. But like I said before, uh, we've brought all our state and local partners with all their investigative equipment uh, to really try to stack the deck against Mr. Cavalcante. Every day we're getting stronger out here. Every day the resolve and the perseverance of these law enforcement officers 
is just immense. Um, there's fabulous um, incident command by the state police and the U.S. Marshal Service has some of their best investigators from Eastern Pennsylvania here. Um, and we're, we're confident that within hopefully the next few days, we can put this to an end. We owe it to the good people of Chester County who have been inconvenienced by this manhunt and we owe it to the victim. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.